Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over songs that came out this week in EDM, stuff I wanted to talk about, 31 songs that I wanted to talk about, so let's hop into it with the trash category. Reminder, these are just my opinions on things, you don't have to take them as gospel truth, um, but we've got Tiesto and Mogai with Explode. Uh, yeah, wow, this track is a major dud for me. Uh, the synth is weak, the kick is flat, the drops are short, there is next to nothing going well for this song. Um, and despite it being so basic, there's like feels like there's so little intentionality that actually went into each of the like main four elements of this track, and I just did not think it worked well. And then we're moving into the bad category. Songs that I thought are uh, are, are not great. They're they're bad. Uh, we've got Rico Nasty and Boys Noise with um, Vagina. Uh, yeah, the Hardcore Dreams EP is out now uh, by those two actually, Rico Nasty and um, Boys Noise three track EP. And um, this is like a brutalistic cut that teeters line between like '90s hardcore and like modern tech house, and it's um, really nothing special. It's trying to be nostalgic but doesn't quite land there. Then tries to be a little sexy and doesn't land there either. And the lyricism is just pretty poor and. Uh, Overall, I thought it was a pretty drag of a track. So, uh, yeah. Then we're moving into Avents featuring Quiet with the Creation of Disgust track out now on Monster Cat. And um, yeah, Monster Cat has been uh, more and more leaning into like heavy rhythm or rhythm as of late. Uh, and this kind of just tipped the scales over for the fact that uh, pretty much any of that heavy hitting rhythm style track could be on Monster Cat moving forward. Um, individually, this track is dark and scary and quite visceral. Uh, but that being said, I thought the vocals were pretty weak and the seemingly like ex exorcistic kind of vocal inflection was a major turnoff for me personally. Um, if you like that kind of like horror style to a song, it's literally like a horror movie in a song. Um, maybe you'll enjoy this, but uh, I just thought it was it was quite messy and um, focused too much on the creepiness of the track rather than actually making a nice, cohesive, sonically pleasing one. So I did not enjoy it that much. And then we got Jay Hardway with On My Way. Uh, I haven't personally listened to a ton of Future House as of late. Uh, and this new Jay Hardway track is uh, just kind of a bit empty and messy, I think, for me. Um, the melody is slightly off-putting. The track uh, as a whole just kind of felt incomplete, I think, in the end. So... We're moving, it, moving into the meh category songs that I thought were meh. We've got Alessa with Zig Zag. Uh, other than the lyrics being pretty nonsensical with the left, right, zig, zag. Um, it's a big room house cut that's uh, meant to be this kind of grand anthemic uh, festival track, but um, I just can't really get over the vocals. I think they're dumb, just straight up. Uh, it's not horrible, but it's definitely not uh, a set closer, that's for sure, so... We got Saint Punk featuring XO Man with Bad Man Calling, a very in-your-face kind of deep tech bass house fusion of a song, um, with a very very fat bassline lead. Uh, it's not overly pleasing, uh, and in fact, I think it's a bit of a messy mix, all things considered. But it's kind of a bop, and I could see myself enjoying it in some circumstances. Then we've got Enema with Now or Never. The Genesis 2 album is now out now. And uh, this is a lot of the same uh, that you get with Enema. Kind of every brand new track is this kind of big tech room house song. And um, it kind of goes through the same structure, the same kind of futuristic low vocals of the like the the world is coming to an end kind of idea. And so, um, yeah, not a huge fan. Then we got, oh man, I still don't know how to say this one. Uh, Guess Alpha Stein? Yeah, not even going to bother, but uh, Digital Slaves, the new Gamma LP is out now, and this track particular uh, is almost like an 80s callback with its kind of deep monotone vocals and um, synth sustains. It literally sounds like a song from the 80s that was like ahead of its time, similar to how we sort of listen to craft work nowadays. You go, oh, like this this was is obviously an old song, but it feels like it's it, it's what, ED, what they thought EDM was going to be like in the future or where music was going in the future. Um, that being said... It's a bit of a nothing burger. Uh, it's it's a short run time and it's got a pretty linear movement and I, uh, in fact, really just one movement. And so, yeah, I just thought it was meh. Then we've got the Tasaki remix of Free, originally by Dylan Francis and Alesso featuring Clementine Douglas. Um, Tasaki got a short little remix on the new These Remixes Are Fire 2 compilation. And uh, while he didn't have a ton to work with originally, uh, he did produce a pretty interesting and unique mix. Um, the synths sound like they're a bit of like a bird call, which is truly a first time melody that I feel like I haven't heard ever before. Um, but yeah, Tasaki just didn't really have a strong bass track to go off of. And so I thought the song was overall pretty mid. Uh, even though I did like what he did with it, I just, yeah, didn't didn't love the original. 
Then we got Zerb and the Chainsmokers featuring Ink with Addicted. Uh, I don't really understand the appeal of this song. I don't think it's bad. I'm just not really sure who the intended audience is. It's too niche to be really loved by like a Chainsmoker fan base um, and a touch too chill to be a real big hit streaming wise uh, and hit big numbers. But um, I guess we'll see how it plays uh, on the charts. But uh, this was kind of just a, a weird, more downed uh, down tempo. Not quite down tempo, but it is like a, a house song. But um, yeah, it just felt weird. Uh, then we got Lose the Child, Nojum, and Daniel Allen. I'm sure I butchered that uh, with Falling. Um, stuttery future bass with a commercial appeal here. Um, I like the offbeat second drop, uh, but found the first to be just a touch too linear, especially considering how dry the mixing is. Um, I think it's intentionally supposed to be a little bit more uh, lighter and uh, and not as, as dynamic. But um, yeah, I just thought it was meh. Then we got Maya and Jacob Gross or Grouse with Don't Stop, a uh, simplistic house cut that's meant to be uh, live mixed pretty much uh, in a club setting. It's bright and cheery, but again, another one that just felt a little dry uh, on the mixing for my liking. Uh, I felt that a couple times with a few of the tracks here this week. Um, as we move into Cosmos Midnight featuring Kuchka, uh, Chance on You is the name of the track, and uh, all things considered... I was pretty disappointed by this track. Um, it's slow, grooving, and easy listening. Uh, but for Cosmos Midnight, it sort of just didn't really have any real danceability to it, I thought. Um, I also thought Kuchka was underutilized as a vocalist here. I sort of just expected more all around. Uh, maybe I just had this preconceived notion that Cosmos Midnight is supposed to be the super fun new disco in your face kind of like grooving. But yeah, I just thought it was kind of boring. Then we're moving into the good category, songs that I thought were pretty good. Uh, we've got Affinity and D-Sab featuring Josh Rubin with Save Me, uh, a punchy melodica track uh, with a pretty solid vocal performance from Josh Rubin. I haven't loved a ton of Josh Rubin in the past, but I think this is not bad, and we'll see more of him soon. But um, yeah, it's a tad on the basic side, but I think uh, the mixing is a huge up for this one for sure. Then we got More Plastic and I'm Alright with Fight, a uh, similar DNB to the last couple More Plastic tracks as of the last little year and a bit, but um, I thought the vocals uh, brought this track beyond just kind of being in the meh category for me. Um, that's not a punchy bass line, uh, but it does have a definite, definite earworm of a chorus, I think for sure, so um, yeah. Then we got Jaws with Teardrops, a simplistic down-to-earth house cut with a stutter synth drop uh, that pairs nicely with the vocal chops, I think, that were placed all throughout. And um, yeah, this is just a, a, a good notion where sometimes I think uh, simple is just better uh, and best. So that's that. As we've got Inzo with uh, Young Majestic, uh, grimy, uh, stylistically empty uh, dubstep cut with a ton of wubs and dubs that makes you feel like you're in the early Skrillex days of EDM. But uh, yeah, it's another shorter track from Inzo that is quite different from his regular stuff. And uh, he's been doing that a lot as of late, uh, just making these kind of shorter, more uh, niche style tracks. And uh, I've been enjoying them. Uh, I, I definitely think the track could have been expanded upon a little bit more, but I did enjoy what we heard. We got Milk with Fireworks out now on Champo. Uh, and then this sounds like 2015's Future Base, and I'm all here for it. That was like my primetime favorite era of Future Base or favorite couple years there. But um, yeah, it's also got this like really guitar, like really nice guitar sub melody, I want to say. It's not quite in the back, but it's not quite the lead in at most at, for the most part. But um, it sounds a lot like it came out of like an like ancient China. Like it sounds very Eastern in uh, its in its playing and, and production in that sense. But um, yeah, I really think it ties in together this kind of I feel like the, the track feels like it's a bit like a Chinese New Year style song um, and themes uh, with the vocals and yeah I don't know I just uh, I, I think it worked quite well and I enjoyed it we got Muzz with Galvanize, a uh, fairly light drum and bass by Muzz standards here, but uh, it does give off a bit of that classic Muzz vibe because of that more uh, lighter and simplistic note to it. But uh, I've been pretty critical of Muzz with his kind of same samey production as of late, and I still stand by that. Um, but I thought this track, um, despite them all kind of sounding the same as of late, late uh, was one of his better cuts from this past year. So I did enjoy this one quite a bit. We've got Borgor and Wales with Juicy, the new, um, oh, I don't even know how to say this one. It's Carrie Corso LP. Not even going to pretend I said that right. Um, but everything about this track is very anti to my regular listening habits. Um, but something about it all kind of just spoke to me. It's got like a sexy party anthem lyrics and a uh, fairly dated trap production, but it all kind of just bangs. Um, maybe it's just a, a guilty pleasure track of mine, but uh, I could really get down to this. 
Then we got Feed Me with Hyper Harmonic. Um, Techno Feed Me was a welcome surprise for sure here. Uh, it's one of the more uh, minimalistic side of things for, from Feed Me, at least in the last couple tracks he's put out. And I think it works wonders for the track. It's got like a driving nonstop beat that just goes and goes and goes, as one would sort of expect from Techno. And I really expected uh, or really excited for whatever is coming out, um, an expectant of what is coming out from this new Feed Me project of some sorts, EP, LP, don't know what it's going to be, compilation, um, something's in the works from Feed Me, and I'm uh, and I'm here for it. We got Rebel Scum featuring Josh Rubin again. Josh Rubin shows up uh, with a new track, Undone. Um, this is Process to the Nines as a stylistic dance floor D&B song, uh, heavily synthesized and constantly moving. Um, Rebel Scum manages to make all of that sound quite clean, uh, considering how <laughs> how stylistically just crunchy it is at times um i especially love the kind of pseudo halftime second half uh halftime second half i think that works out but uh yeah enjoy the track quite a bit then we got quarter and mazel 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 with apex uh a jumpy dnb cut uh that doesn't quite sound like dnb yet sometimes it's like an amalgamation of a bunch of different genres here and there and um is one of the <laughs> one of the songs that i truly go i i really don't care about genres a whole ton i use it often as a way to just signify what the song is like for the most part but you really can't i don't think can define the song too much but um yeah the synth lead is quite beautiful and the backing drum kit really keeps the whole thing nice and fresh and i enjoyed it quite a bit then we got uh, Sharks with Subterranean, the Knights of the Round Table Volume 6 is out now from uh, Disciple. And uh, for Sharks track, um, this thing is, is pretty dry. Uh, I've talked about dry mixing here. And uh, uh, yeah, at least in its sound design, I would say it's 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 dry. It, it's I mean, Sharks normal production is really, really wet and liquidy in its sound. Um, and this is just not that. It's, it's a lot harsher than we normally get from Sharks. And uh, yeah, just has those kind of, although it still does have those kind of classic kind of flashy melodies and synth runs that we know from Sharks, but um, this is a perfect Sharks track for a roundtable comp, I think, for sure. Um, this this fits in really nicely with the rest of the compilation, which is why I think it sounds a little more dry, and I think it's stylistic in that sense, so. We got Jessica Autofred and uh, featuring Gigi Madri with uh, Don't Speak, a cover of Don't Speak by uh, No Doubt with the Don't Speak, I know what you say. This is the one that you probably know from the past or at least don't know consciously, but you're like, oh, yeah, I, I do know that song. But yeah, cover from that old school song. Uh, and it's quite glitchy dubstep sound design here. Uh, Gigi actually isn't normally my favorite vocalist, but I think her vocal inflection was perfect for this track and keeping this kind of mid 1990s vibe. And uh, yeah, I thought Jessica's production is is in tip-top form, and uh, so is Gigi here. So, pretty solid track that I did not expect to like as much as I did. Then we got Starseed, Aaron Shirk, and Sarah Benio with something to hold on to. Uh, Starseed has been leaning more commercial nowadays, uh, but definitely took a step back from that with this one. Um, this is some of the most, like, I would say very modern melodic dubstep that is sounding good. This is the melodic dubstep for the modern age, 2024, that that sounds great, that is unique and creative and interesting, uh, and it's and it's a hit. So love that new Starseed track. Uh, then we got Mike Shift and Neo Chrono with 4AM, uh, a new Circus Electric single. Uh, and this is a blast of like tinny, stuttery color bass with quaint vocals. Um, it's definitely a pretty niche track. Uh, and one that reminds me a lot of, um, I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes I used to listen to a ton of old like editorial or like random people's Spotify playlists. And sometimes you just find this gold track. You just find something you're like, oh man, this is just like perfectly what I want to listen to. Uh, and this is kind of that. Uh, and so I, I really enjoy that. I don't know if that's just a, a me personal thing that I've experienced a ton, but I uh, really enjoyed this one. Then that boss fight with Decimate, another heavy abrasive dubstep banger from Boss Fight. Um, and uh, while I think this will easily land on Monster Cat's best of at the year end, uh, this one is, isn't as special as some of his other tracks. I think the mixing is a tad flat here as well. And um, yeah, it does, doesn't quite have that extra X factor to a Boss Fight track. It is his standard, more cookie cutter formula, which works well, and I think it sounds great. But uh, it's not; uh, it's far from his best, I would say. But still, I still really enjoy it quite a bit. I'm just being a little hypercritical of these ones. So. Uh, and then we've got Bose and Yola Rakoba featuring Darla Jade with Promise. Uh, this song feels like it was plucked right out of the early 2000s trance era uh, with just modern mixing to it. Um, the vocal chops are simple but really enhance the track and uh, are the primary factor that give it that kind of retro vibe to it. Um, really great track, honestly. Another one that I did not expect to love as much as I did. 
Then we've got Haywire with or without. Uh, Haywire is sounding a lot like Martin Garrix on this new track. Um, he tackles a fairly new genre for Haywire. I would say it sounds a lot like Electro House, um, sort of Electro Progressive House here. But uh, yeah, it's gritty and punchy, both things that one would assume you get with a Haywire track, um, but just to a different kind of overarching genre. Uh, it's unique for disc his discography, and I'm actually uh, wanting to hear more of this. Although um, the rollout of this song felt really weird. Uh, it's a totally different song on Deezer, if you ever listen on Deezer stuff and it is on Spotify. It's also not even out on YouTube. And so it's just a lot of weird stuff on this track. Uh, and I also did a reaction to it, I guess, if you want to watch my reaction to that. But uh, My number one track of the week, my favorite track this week, was Temanite with Yours, uh, a new self-released Temanite track that leans pretty heavily into both color and future-based territory. Uh, it's punchy, yet thought-provoking, and goes through a ton of various tonal movements, um, from heavy, jittering synths to a romantic saxophone solo. Uh, and Temanite just finds a way to blend it all together quite effortlessly and seamlessly. So a uh, track that uh, just gets better and better the more you listen to it, uh, for sure. So, uh, But that has been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of all, any and all songs in the comment section below. Uh, other than that, have a fantastic Easter, and uh, we'll see you guys in another video.